Well, here we go. Welcome to the Profit Tool Belt Podcast. This is just for construction and contracting business owners who are interested in the business of the contracting business. Because if you want to work smarter, not just harder, you're in the right place. Today's guest is going to be Steve Cedarquist. Now, you probably know Steve from TV, but let me get to that in a second. We're going to talk today about how to charge for estimates and pass true costs on to customers. Now, he's a licensed contractor in California, and as I said, he's on TV. You probably know him from TV shows on HGTV, uh, Flip or Flop, and Flipping 101. He's also on the Magnolia Network on a show called Capturing Home. Now, he does investment properties, he's an electrical contractor, and you're going to hear some very cool stories, some background for how long his family has been in the construction business. But first of all, here's why this important is really important to you, because number one, too many contractors, and I'm talking directly to you, my friend, are eating the true costs of a job in the hopes of getting the job. Number two, eating those costs means it comes out of your pocket, whether you're ignoring it or not. And Steve's going to show you what he does to get around that. Number three, Steve's operating in one of the most highly regulated states in the U.S., and he's still able to make it work. So the rest of us don't really have excuses when we say some outside factor is limiting us, right? He has some super cool stories. So when I talk about bringing you real contractors in real situations and what they're really doing about it, Steve is that guy. So you're going to, you're in good hands here. Hey, listen, what's this podcast all about? Well, it's all about mindset, experts, and growth secrets. Steve being one of those experts on growth secrets and mindset. Perfect. Perfect. We've got the trifecta. My goal is to give you focus on the what and the how of growing your business. Now, you, of course, have to bring the when. What kind of experts do I bring? Well, like Steve, people who are doing it, not just talking about it. If they can't educate, inform, or inspire you, they don't make it on the show. Now, some of you know that I wrote a book called Construction Millionaire Secrets because what I've observed from the wisest of business leaders in the trades is that they are really bolted down when it comes to time, team, money, how to grow predictably, exit planning, succession planning, marketing, and sales. On top of that, which is pretty unique to contracting, is dealing with the family situation because there's a lot of family businesses in contracting. So that's how I build the show agenda year over year. Okay, now let me hit on growth for a second. Look, to me, it doesn't matter what size of company you have, whether you're one employee or 10 or 20 or 200. And that might surprise you. That's because I'm not talking to the size of the business you've got. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to the fight you have within you. I'm talking to what makes you, you. I haven't met you yet, most likely, but I already know something about you. If you tuned into this show, it's because you're a little bit frustrated and a little bit excited. You're excited because you know you can grow and you're frustrated because you feel stuck at the level you're at. You know, people on the outside, you know, your friends, your family, they look at you and they say, what drives you? <laughs> you are the kind of person that should be listening to this show. That's the, exactly the kind of person who opts into listening to this, right? Now, you're going to hear about the same systems and processes, whether you do $20 million or $200,000. Again, it's up to you to put those things in place. Now, of course, if we ever get a chance to meet, I'm happy to walk you through your specific situation. It is super common for me to have one phone call with a renovator who is starting and ending four new renovations a month. Imagine that one a week, they're finishing one a week and they're starting one a week. And at the same time, that same week, I'll talk to somebody who's doing around 250 K just getting started and feeling stuck because they're doing $10,000 bathrooms, nothing wrong with a $10,000 bathroom, but they know they can be doing more. So for a second, let's talk about rights and responsibilities, yours and mine. It's your right as the business owner to get the information you need when you need it delivered in a way that makes sense. At the same time, it's my responsibility to make sure everything we talk about here is simple, right? Simple systems. Simple systems because simple pictures, simple documents, simple ideas, simple models. Those could scale. So you're always going to hear simple systems from me. So it's also your responsibility to take action on what I show you or teach you or talk about or what the guests bring you as perspective. And then, of course, it's my right to hold you accountable and challenge you, which is what I'm doing here. This is like a mini business. Every time you log in, it's a business coaching meeting. You're operating at the highest level of your potential as a business owner. Okay. So now we're clear, I hope, on our rights and responsibilities. 
So why did I start this podcast and why did I build this community? Because for way too long, people have been keeping secrets and I'm done with it. You have questions as a growing business, but it's impossible to find those answers in one place in an easy to understand way. And I hear you when you're texting me or when you're sending me emails or you get on a call, Dom, we're doing pretty good, but we could be doing much better. Dom, you know, we're a family business, so things are a little different. Sometimes they're a little tense. Okay, I get that. Or they'll say, Dom, I'm ready, but <laughs> and Dom, so much to do. I don't know where to start. Or this one, which I call the kitchen table conversation. Why am I this busy, but I'm still broke? Ugh. If any of those sound familiar, then you're going to be happy to know that that's exactly why we built this show, to inform, educate, and inspire business owners in the contracting trades. There are simple systems to help you run this contracting business like a company, like a business. Make the money you deserve, live the life you want, sit on the beach chair you've been looking forward to. Those simple systems give you the quiet confidence to take this company wherever you want to get it to, wherever you want to go. If I had to summarize everything for you, this podcast is about mindset of growth and success. So speaking of mindset, I've got a couple of dad jokes for you. Now, why dad jokes and why bad jokes and why dad jokes poorly delivered with poor timing? Well, I do want to get you laughing because when you're laughing, your mind is open to possibilities. Your mind is free. It's clear. You're not thinking about other things. So let's get into that now. See if I can get you to giggle. And as I've heard from many of you, you're stopping the podcast and texting your friends or your wives or maybe even your older kids some of these jokes as we go. And that makes me very happy. Our first joke today is brought me brought to brought to you by a friend of mine, Don. Don is uh, works out next to me. Uh, the first time I saw him, I thought he was a cop and not undercover because he looks like a massive cop. Um, but he's actually an accountant to mega family corporations, like mega big family corporations. And uh, hey, you'll be happy to know that as an accountant to these large, large family businesses, he does a lot of counseling, which is not what he thought an accountant would be doing. But I'll let him tell his story. Uh, whenever you get a chance to meet him. Here's his joke. Why is dark spelled with a K? Because you can't see in the dark. <laughs> I love it. Uh, hey, listen, because Steve Cedarquist is uh, going to be telling you a story today about uh, pharmacies, and I'll let that come up in, the, in a moment. Here's a pharmacist joke. A lady walked into a pharmacy and told the pharmacist that she needed some cyanide. The pharmacist looked at her and said, why in the world? Do you need cyanide? Well, the lady explained she needed to poison her husband. The pharmacist's eyes got really big and he said, lady, I can't give you cyanide to kill your husband. They'll throw both of us in jail. The lady reached into her purse and pulled out a picture of her husband in bed with the pharmacist's wife. The pharmacist took one look at the picture and said, oh, you didn't tell me you had a prescription. I actually like that one. Um, Listen, I host this podcast because one day I would be very proud to be your business coach. As a matter of fact, I have a team of highly trained business coaches that I've personally hand-selected. I have very high expectations for the people that join my team, and I'm proud of every single one of them. As you listen to this podcast, ask yourself if you think me and my team might be the right tool to help you get to the next level. So with that being said, I'm going to go into business coach mode right now. I have two simple action items for you. Number one, I'm going to challenge you because in this episode, you're going to hear something from Steve or myself. You're going to hear something, learn something, realize something, but I want you to take action on that in the next 24 hours. So look at your watch, whatever time it is. So by the time your watch hits that again, 24 hours from now, I want you to do something with the information. And then I want you to pay attention to how that improves your business or your life. Now, number two, I want you to think on this idea. I want you to think the big thinks. Are you happy being a contractor who runs a few crews? Or are you ready? Ready to be a business person who just happens to run a construction company? By the end of today's episode, you, my friend, will know the answer. So let's get to it. Mr. Steve Cedarquist, how the heck are you? Hey, I'm good, dude. Dominic, how are you? Good. It feels surreal to be talking to you and to have you talk back because I used to just see you on TV. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm human. 
I'm not a robot. I'm not AI. You're not AI yet. Yeah, I'm not AI yet. That's true. That's Isn't true. That... that was the whole negotiations were about. About yeah, that, they would take your likeness and and use it. Yeah. Manipulate it into other things. Uh huh. They're never going to be able to renovate homes the way you do. Yeah, you know, well, we're 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 a little different. You know, the way we renovate versus some other flippers and some other people do. We we you know we we do it the, we do it the right way. Yeah. Well, actually, today that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to, because cool. we're talking to contractors here. So we're going to talk about passing the true costs on to the customer because we're running businesses, right? Yeah. Uh, but before we get to that, can I ask you a very important and deep question? I don't know. Maybe, I guess. Let me see if I can answer it. Go ahead. All right. Mr. Steve Cedarquist, who the heck are you? And how is it <laughs> you come to be speaking to all these forward facing contractors all over the world? It's a really good question. You know, I don't know. You know, it's, uh, I've been in the business since I, I started working with my dad at 13 years old. Mm. So I've been exposed to it for a long, long time. And I just kind of, um, kept going. Yeah. It's kind of in my blood, you know, with my aunt, you know, with all my relatives and everything. It's just, I think it's something that we're born with. Yeah. Now you, your family's been kicking around in construction a long time. What was that first business? My great grandfather, started Cedarquist Showcase and Cabinet Company in 1916 in downtown LA on a street that's no longer in downtown LA called Zonal Avenue. <clears throat> and he started, um, he was doing a bunch of drug stores. He was doing those old, remember those old tile, you know, drugstore countertops. countertops. You know, tile. Actually, the my apothecary. friend. Apothecaries. Well, I'll tell you a funny story is um, I have the patent. My great grandfather invented Thinset. No in way. Very, yeah. The very first ingredient was asbestos. So I was like, yeah. So when, when we go to demo something old like that, we're just like, yeah, you guys know this is all full of asbestos, right? So, uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but people also don't maybe know, you know, if they don't watch the TV show. I don't know how they wouldn't, but what, what's your, uh, what's your media presence? Why don't we go there? Well, I started doing, um, I started doing the show flipper flop on mm -hmm. HDTV <clears throat> kind of by accident. It was, um, they had lost their contractor and mids, I think it was the end of season two, it was the last episode of season two. And, um, I had already reached out to Tarek um and or christine i don't know which one it was i reached out him on facebook yeah and i just said hey if you ever need any help or a backup contractor i'm your guy they wrote me back and they said we know who you are we uh -oh. we, we we keep tabs on you we we know you're you do what we do mm. um <clears throat> how would you like to come out and meet us at one of the houses and i said uh sure when uh, tomorrow meet us there at eight o'clock in the morning up in la habra La Habra is California. And um, I said, okay, sure. So I went up there, met with them maybe for a half hour. He asked me, what would I do to the house? And I said, well, I would do this, this, and this, and this. Budget-wise, you're probably looking at X dollars. He says, you're, he goes, would you mind being on camera tomorrow? And I go, well, yeah, I'll, I'll do this for you for one episode, sure. <laughs> We did so well on that episode that they contracted with us. We negotiated. We got a contract. We actually started doing a bunch of episodes mm. uh, to the point where they wanted us to do it full time. And I just couldn't. I couldn't. Oh, full, -time. Uh, full time content creation for the TV channel. Yeah. 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 We couldn't do it. It was it. it, it, it I mean, I ended up doing, I think, 16 episodes with them all sporadically through season three, four, five. And then we came back in season 10, did a cameo because we kind of more merged on our own and more of a design element with mm -hmm. these flips because, you know, the flips, I don't know. I, I walked, I, I used, well, I don't do a lot anymore because there's not a lot of flips going on, but I walk probably, I don't know. I probably walk a hundred flips a year and I would see the, Poor quality of work. Oh, of course. The lack of attention, the lack of design. Mm. And we just thought we would take it up a notch. So mm. we started um, 
you know, my business partner and myself, we decided to merge companies. She was running a company, Simply Stunning Spaces, and I was running Steve Cedarquist Designs. Well, first Cornerstone, and then we sold Cornerstone in 16. We got bought out by a big conglomerate. They were buying up another couple other construction companies and wanted to make a big a big thing. And they were kind of enamored by our presence and TV and stuff. Sure, so they sure. got us out. Did We did very well with that uh, with that asset sale. And then we just started buying with that money. We just started buying our own properties and uh, putting a really cool design element into them and really just going above and, you know, like not buying the $200,000 homes at the time, 200,000. Now that same home, 600. Yeah. But we would spend more money and buy the five and $600,000 home and we'd put 300,000 into it, you know, and sell it for a million five. Ah, so you make it luxury homes. Yeah, we were doing, you know, mid, mid mid to luxury. Um, not we weren't buying mansions. I have a friend of mine that goes out and buys, you know, these huge mansions in Bel Air and, mm. and all that. But it's just so those projects go on and linger. And you know, you if we're in a project over six months, we're there too long. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> interesting when people have that kind of money. They either want to do the renovation or they just want to build their own. You know, building around is good. We've done some. We've done some ground ups. I've done a couple in Reno and um, Reno, Nevada. That's kind of my other market out there. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And that market is. It, it, I like doing new builds. I, I pref- actually, it sounds kind of weird, but I prefer doing new builds because we're not trying to figure out what someone did. I did one the other day where I went up in the attic and I'm looking at this beam and I'm like, what in the heck were they thinking? You know, I'm just looking, I mean, it was old construction and I, I'm just like, I wonder how this house is standing up. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm looking at this, so I had to fix it, Yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, that, that creates problems, you know, because you don't, when you go to buy a house, I mean, I inspect it, I do my own inspections, but you, you don't always see everything. You know, the one I just did for, I just did another TV show. For flipping 101, mm-hmm. uh, Tark's other show, and uh, we ran out of flippers. We were we were doing we were doing some design work for them, and, and the interest rates went up, <clears throat> and we there was no flippers. So he's like, "Dude, you got to go on camera with this house you just bought." I'm like, oh. Oh, "Okay, what's how are you going to sell me as a new flipper?" He's like, "We're going to sell you as the overspender." Oh, that was oh, that's, that's kind of me. Yeah, that that was I the byline you know, underneath your name. The overspender. The overspender. But here's the deal. And uh, most of your, I'm sure these contractors that are listening right now, they agree. We do a job. We do it right. We do it right the first time. I kind of take the Mike Holmes approach. You know, Mike Holmes is kind of my mentor. I love Mike. Mike, I know Mike. He's a great guy. He's from your your place on Canada. There. He's a great guy. Mm-hmm. Except I never understood why you guys turn the, your panels upside down. But other than that, we're good. And I, and I, you know, I love this premise of this show all the time is why don't you just do it right the first time? And so that's my, that is my motto. I made my guys, my crew, when yeah. I had the company, I made them wear shirts that said crew on the back. And they were all a little agitated. They're like, you these, because they were like, you made this from the show from Canada. And we're, we're not from Canada. And I'm like, oh, oh. I said, just, you got to look at the man. And look at the work. I'm gonna make and I used to make the guys watch the show. And I go, see what he does. He looks at the crappy work and he's like, if he had just done it right the first time, you wouldn't have all these problems. Mm. So I used to instill that in my guys. I was up to 52 guys on my last company, and I would instill do it right the first time. There's no there's no profitability in going back and redoing your work. Mm -hmm. that's a great thing to that is a great lesson for all of us it doesn't matter what trade you're in and then it comes down to passing you know look at how i'm going to loop back to the topic passing true costs on to the customer you want to keep that in line because whatever's left is your profit exactly yeah you know when you don't go prepared to a job that's another thing if you don't go prepared to the job you know you have employees let's say you have employees Mm -hmm. and you're not you're not thinking for them You've got to think for them. I mean, I know that it sounds a little, maybe some people are going to disagree with me on that, but think of it from this perspective. 
if you were thinking of the job, but I used to get my work orders, you know, I got a little overwhelmed with so many guys. I had a couple superintendents, but I would always install my superintendents. I go, make sure these guys go prepare because we did property services. We did remodels, you know, and we were doing uh, our own, you know, flips at the time with the other company cornerstone. And I would say, if this guy gets to the job or gets to a client's house and he's missing a widget or he's missing a, sh a shim, a cost. A screw, and he's like, and, and I get his time ticket back and I'm looking at this Home Depot time that he's been to Home Depot. It took, you know, he, and I'm like, dude, this job was allocated for three hours. It took you four and a half. Yeah. He's like, yeah. well, I had to go to Home Depot. But, but the widget was only 10 cents. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you don't do the math. Do the math, my friend. I said, yeah. I have to pay you your time. My overhead, your time, gas, loss of revenue because now you couldn't make it to the next job yep. so now i have a loss of revenue so that little widget that was 10 cents cost me close to 200 dollars. yeah and they don't get it you know that's that is one well, it's, hard, it's hard logic most of the people on the show have a hard time and i'm not saying this in a bad way we always have to wrap our head around i'll just go do it myself or i'll just send somebody it's just a half hour but it's not a half hour it's that poor planning costs you money like it you said does. you're going to miss out on the next job you're, you're taking from, you know, one tradesperson and moving on to another. There's so many, the, the ripple effect can add up to hundreds of dollars an hour. It's us. You know, when we did the show, when we were doing flip or flop, flipping one-on-one, -on -one, and I just did another episode in my, on Magnolia Network um, for capturing home. And um, the wait time is also. So I learned after my first couple episodes, I learned to like send the guys away. They're like, go to another job. If I need you, I'll call you back. I'd set it up because I, what I noticed when, when it came down to profitability, you know, my um, accountant, she would have a field day with me. She'd be like, dude, you've got, every guy's got three hours of doing nothing. How are we paying for that? Right. I'd be like, um, can we put it in somewhere? And she's like, no. no, she does job costing. She was like, no, dude, these are going to, you're going to end up losing money on these projects you're doing for TV. So we, after the second episode, we were, we learned how to do it. We learned the day we were filming, I would just be, just be me. I'd put my belt on, I would work, or I'd have, you know, uh, okay. specific working, having like the tile guy there. And then when Tarek would put his hands on something, I would make sure that he left quickly so I could tear it off. Again. <laughs> <laughs> he showed up in flip-flops. I'm like, dude, this is against OSHA. You can't do this. You can't yeah, show up. Yeah. A yeah. job without, and he would do demo and he would do it without goggles or glove. And I'm like, I said, I can't have this. My You're job's. in California of all places. You can't. Oh, yeah. And you know what? It's funny because I know other contractors that have been on TV shows that OSHA has gone back on them and said, Hey, we saw you do that demo and you didn't have guys weren't wearing proper yeah. things. Not that they would cite them, but they would they'd be on their radar. Now you're on the radar and no, you don't want to be on the radar. No, Don't no. I've had hard. I've had incidences with OSHA. I had a guy, one of my top guys one time fell off a ladder and he was at a job site by himself, which I didn't know about. And he called me and he was crying. He's like, help me, you know, and all that. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, no. and we were doing a new build here in Huntington Beach. And I remember OSHA, uh, he, you know, fire, fire department came, took him away. He was hurt pretty bad. He fell two stories. And OSHA was at my door within the hour and wanted to see all my log books. They yep. wanted to see all my training manuals. And luckily, knock on wood, we had just had ladder training the week prior. Oh. oh. So the only thing they fined me for was a $400 because the porta potty toilet that I had at the job site did not have a wash basin. And if you don't have a wash basin, that's against uh, OSHA law. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> How, uh, when you talk about having a training manual and evidence of training, do you use a dashboard in your company where you track important key metrics, key numbers? You know, when we had the larger company, we, we definitely did. And now that we're now, now that I'm smaller with my companies, Steve Cedarquist designs, um, you know, we're a design build firm, but I'm a hundred percent sub based and I don't, uh, I mean, I've got an assistant, you know, but she happens to be, she happens to be my wife, you know, so she's under the family tree on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
but uh, yeah, we we don't uh, we don't any longer. I don't. It, it is so labor intensive, you know. And we're trying to, you know. I remember sitting there with job costing, you know, with my, you know, and our accounting team, and we we, you know, you. She was, you know, she would tell me. She would say, you know, if you're paying Joe forty, we got to sell that job for ninety to ninety five to make at least fifteen percent profit. Yeah. You know, ten percent is going into taxes. You're going to end up with five or six percent, depending on the break on your taxes. But um, it's hard to compete. I mean, we, you know, you'd get, we'd go out to bid, which, by the way, I charge for my bids, and I have, I'll tell you why I do that. And, mm. and maybe the other contractors will understand. Oh, this is great. We just interviewed John Geoffrey about the same thing about charging for bids, charging for um, the pre-construction agreements. Well, you, yeah, you do. I think it's important because it shows, it puts a value on you, it puts a value on what you're doing, and it's time consuming. I mean, I, I've spent, if it's, I mean, you give me a, you know, you give me a set of blueprints, um, a lot of times if I don't have time to do them. If I'm doing something else, I'll sub it out. And it costs me 300 bucks to have them go through it, give me all the takeoffs, you know, give me everything I need. And, you know, where do I absorb that money? What I do is I, I'll credit them the job back to the job once we do the um once we do the numbers mm -hmm. and if they if accept our bid we'll put it into the we'll just give them a credit just say look here's here's your 500 dollars back that's an incentive for them um you know it's an incentive for us it's an incentive for them we don't um we we feel that it shows um it brings a value to what we're bringing them to the table and um we we put a lot of effort into our bids we, yeah. we do a lot of research um you know, one thing that I try to do in my bids is we try to look at all, every single facet possible. I put a contingency in there. I try to, you know, let people, I mean, I'm very upfront about mm -hmm. everything, about, you know, testing, asbestos testing, oh lead testing. Oh my God, testing. in California, the testing must be through the roof. Well, the testing is expensive here. It is. But, um, you know, you're looking at, just for testing alone, you're probably at 600 bucks. That's for collection and testing. Mm -hmm. And then we, we let them know up front, like, hey, by the way, you know, you're we don't we can't give you an estimate if there's something found, you know, if there's, um, you know, if you don't want to do it. I've had customers come back to me and say, well, I don't want to test. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to pay all that. I don't want to pay for abatement if I have asbestos. And I said, well, legally, I'm required to. If you want to, you know, have mm -hmm. me hire me as an advisor on the job i can advise you it's a whole different it's a whole different plan that i work out with them they pay all the bills they they act as their own contractor they handle things on their own i'll advise them and have them sign a waiver if i say well like you need to test but you didn't that's on you not me i'm not i'm just advising you what you should and shouldn't do and then what we do on that that's a whole different whole different set of how we handle some jobs which we we do, and we kind of go more on a consulting basis at that point, mm -hmm. and then we charge them a percentage of the job. So if it's a million dollar job, we'll charge them a hundred thousand dollars. This is what we do. Yeah, well, and that's passing the true cost on to the customer. You do well with that model. Yeah, we've done um, since I started the smaller version here, Steve Cedarquist Designs. Um, yeah, I've probably done about five of those in the past, like three or four years during COVID. Um, I did two right during COVID and, um, yeah, it was, it was great. They, they paid the, I actually it was great because I didn't have to carry any, um, um, I mean, I carry my own insurance, but I didn't have to carry any workers comp at the time. I didn't have to carry anything. Um, it was great. It was actually uh, amazing because, uh, they, they paid all the bills. They paid everybody, they paid all the subs. I gave them the invoices. It was good. I didn't mark up any of the subs invoices. I had subs try to pay me. I didn't, um. I didn't play that game. I don't do that. That's dishonest. They're paying me a they're paying me a fee. I'm giving them the true cost, and they can pay it. Nice, nice, and that's done well for. And you know, you've got people coming to you now because obviously you're a well known name in the industry. You've got a beautiful showroom behind you. Thank you. Yeah. What what Appreciate version that. of showroom are we looking at here? How many times have you updated it? <laughs> it gets updated. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this thing gets this thing gets updated probably once a month. You know, because we film here a lot. We do a lot of filming. I, I rent the space out for filming a lot. Oh. Um, they've actually filmed a couple of TV shows here. Um, we put it on uh, open space. It's called open space. It's a 
for industry kind of a thing where the, they're looking for a specific, you know, location. Right. Um, we put it out there. So it pays for itself. My rent here is cheap. My, my friend owns the building. So my rent here is under a thousand bucks a month. So, wow. um, and I lease this out when I lease it out for rent, you know, for filming, I, you know, we charge 2,500 bucks for the day. So we make money on that end of it too. You're a businessman. Hey, you You're got to be just a pretty face world. on a, the fix it or flip it channel. <laughs> that, oh, that, you know, that. Sometimes that stuff gets frustrating when you talk to a homeowner and they're like, well, is this going to take a half an hour? You're like, no, no, the TV yeah. shows a half an hour. This is not going to take a half hour. A lot of people think I'm expensive because I've been on TV. You know, that's funny. I get that. Yeah, a lot. I could see that. I could see that they being like, a question. Oh, they can't afford you. And I'm like, afford me to what? What are you comparing me to? <laughs> You, you know, what are, you, what are you comparing me to? That's like, yeah. are you comparing me to, you know, the guy working out of his pickup truck at Home Depot? I go, yeah, then I'm probably going to be more expensive. Yeah. I said, but I think I'm, I think I'm competitive. I, I mean, I'm going to give you true costs. I mean, I've, I've done, you know, it is, and I'm sure contractors will agree with me. We've done these bids and people go, oh, I'm going to go with, you know, the other guy, he came in 50,000 cheaper. And you're looking at your numbers going, there's no way this guy came in 50,000 cheaper. He's he blowing know, smoke. He missed something. Yeah, he missed no, something. he didn't miss something. He, he's not, he didn't think out of, he, a lot of guys try to play that game. And I don't, you know, I tell clients, I think, go the, with the it. change order game? Change order game. Uh, we try to look at things. We put a contingency in our bid and we, we try to look at it. And if I, you know, and if it's a true change order, you know, I'll do it. If it's something that's, you know, I can just, I'm already there. I know. I'm not, yeah. printing, I'm not printing nickel and dime. I, I don't like nickel and dime in my clients. I really don't. I don't like doing that. If I can whip it up in the, uh, you know, put it in the contingency fund, you know, I'll put about usually five or eight thousand in contingencies, and that usually handles the small, the small little small items. Can, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, be, be a, nobody, nobody likes change orders. Well, you know, I, I get to see commercial and residential contractors in, in what I do. And one of the things that we track with commercial contractors is a funny number. It's called change orders per X. And the X is different for every company. But there's some, I can't, can't even say it's builders or GCs. There's some GCs where their project managers, sometimes there's change orders you know are going to come from a certain PM or a certain GC. You just mm -hmm. know the way they bid their jobs, there's always change orders and you can rely on them. And so we'll, we'll get two different uh, subcontractors bidding on that GC and, and eventually they realize they keep losing to this guy, but he keeps doing okay on these jobs because he's figured out change orders per X. So he goes and he bids yeah. knowing it's just say a hundred thousand dollars, but he knows on that hundred grand, there's going to be 18, 16 grand in change orders. I'm just picking random numbers. So he can yeah. bid tight knowing that that's going to come through just the way that company runs their business. But you have to really know your numbers to do that. You can't play around. Yeah. I mean, we do. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do change orders, but it's usually because one of our designers, you know, or the client has changed their mind about something or they want to add, you know, while you're here, can you build a second story? I mean, like, you know, <laughs> that's a change order. Yeah. yeah. While I'm, you're here. I, I've had him do that. I've had him, but we got, I, I've literally started out at a house one time on just the bathroom. It was one of my, it was one of my, um, celebrity clients and they get a lot of money they they're very well known it's a band and they're they're very very well known and they're one of the top five bands in the world and we're over there doing his house and um his wife who's a sweetheart and um they're just like well you know we want we were thinking about this we're thinking about this and i'm like let's get through the bathroom first and then we can talk about whatever else yeah. we want to do so we end up a job that was a sixty thousand dollar bathroom. We ended up spending, gosh, another three years there. Three years, three more years at this house, and we literally, we became friends. I mean, we like literally went there for Christmas. <laughs> My wife and I ended up going there for Christmas, and like you know, we we still we still hang out with them when they when they do a residency in Vegas or something. Yeah. We'll go up there and we'll hang out with them backstage, and oh, that's um, awesome. So yeah, it's been it's been fun. We've um. If, if, when you, whoever goes to my Instagram, you'll see a lot of stuff that we do backstage with bands and stuff. Because once you kind of get in that with those certain kind of people, well, then you, you get know, other, like, yeah. Oh yeah, we we do. I, you know, once I did an executive producer home, and you know, once I did his, I got referred to another one, and then we do actors, and we, you know, he just you get on this like list, 
you know, and I don't, not to say I do them all. Um, I get some of them and if I don't like them, if they're not good, good people, that they don't have good energy when I get there and they're mm. just, you know, they don't, they're not going to be proactive, you know, proactive with this and, you know, explain what they want. I think I don't take the job. I don't need, I don't need the work. Do I got remember, plenty of work. Do you remember back to how you started though? Like when you first went on your own, it, you didn't just immediately become a TV host and you didn't just immediately start building homes in Reno. What was your first gig? solo well i started out when i was 13 working for my dad uh i worked weekends i work it's funny i looked at my social security when i can collect money and i was i'm 63 now and i was looking at that and i came the other day and, and my wife was like you started working when you were 13 and i said yeah i took a little detour there when i got kind of in that hollywood scene and i kind of let you know drugs and things like that kind of take over my life for a minute and um you know because you're up there and that scene is pretty prevalent up there. And um, so there was two years I didn't do anything. Those were two years I was kind of on vacation. Mm. And um, but I started in 2006. I, um, I got divorced in 94 and I. Um, man, it, it, I just I, I had to take a full time job. So I took a full time job being a facilities manager. And I was working all their projects for them and, and doing all that. And I, I, I then I in 2002, I started doing a bunch of side work and doing all that. And then I got really in demand. So I, I started full fledged in 2006 with just myself and one, and one other guy. Wow. I wasn't licensed. I wasn't I didn't have a contract. I was just a handyman. Right. And um, and then 2008, I got my license and I. I blew up after the, re the recession hit. People saw what we did and we were doing fix up homes and stuff. And boy, we grew, gosh, from 2009 to 11, we grew from two trucks to 13 trucks. Yeah. You said you got to 50 some odd employees. That's 52. Growth. We had, when I sold the company, we had 27 trucks, 27 trucks. And we were working uh, two different shifts. We were working a, a morning shift and a swing shift. And we were doing, um, I was doing work all over from so I, we were based here in orange county california yeah we would do san diego i would do indio county oh, los angeles county that's not oh, a yeah, short we drive were, no we were doing man we were gosh during the recession we were working for the banks Walmart, washington mutual was our big our big bank until they changed over to chase so yeah we were just killing it i mean we were oh my gosh I wish I had, you know, had the brains that I have now because I would have bought half those property and held oh, on to them. I go to bed at night dreaming I'd bought properties in the past. I actually dream of going back in time just to buy real estate. Well, I bought some, but I sold them. I bought and sold, bought and <laughs> yeah. sold. I was, you know, yeah. Carlene, I'd make 30000 here. And, you know, I was thinking I was killing it. But if you had the financial backing, like you look at Blackstone, look what Blackstone did. You know, I don't know if you know their model, Blackstone, who owns. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, I just, I, I'm wondering which part of the story because I, I see, uh, you know, a lot of the media stuff for Blackstone. But what? Yeah, tell me. They started out in residential. They started out in residential during. Um, we, my, my best friend used to work for them in all mm -hmm. the residential. I bid against them all the time. They'd always win. Um, they buy. They pay more money than we were, and I never understood why. Like, why would they pay more money for these? I mean, like, what are they thinking? I mean, I was looking, future. what's the ROI on this? And I was like trying to do their math in my head and come to find out they're, they were all buying home. So they liquidated all of their residential assets at the time in 2017, 18 and part of 19. Mm -hmm. And they killed it. I mean, they, they had them all, they were all rentals. And now they're back, apparently, I guess, doing it again. They're buying up stuff again. They kept a lot of them. But man, they they're they're killing it. Look at them now. Look at they own they own half a day. Yeah, they own they own the city center in Vegas now. I mean, That's they're they're like crazy numbers. Crazy numbers. I would like to work for them. I, <laughs> <laughs> could like, you imagine what imagine what you could learn there? Oh, I would love it. I you know I I have always had the philosophy like you're green, you're growing, ripe, you're dead. You know, I'm always I always hire people smarter than me. I mean, and I, and when I did that with, with Cornerstone, I grew this huge, huge, you know, conglomerate, I thought, and, um, you know, I always hired people that were way smarter than me and I paid them well because I learned a lot. I always kept my, you know, I was always humble and listened and, 
and learned. And, and uh, I think that really helped with my success. Yeah. And well, don't you buy your time back when I've got somebody who I can trust to do a job, whatever, let's say it's an estimator and I can just trust that they're doing a good job. I only have to check a few things. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have to do 99% of the work. I just do 1% of the work, check the estimate, ask a couple of questions, test yep. and measure. And then off to the races, I can go do other things, which is building the business. If I've got yep. a bookkeeper, I trust or a finance department, however big you are. I can do a lot of things because I trust that. If I don't trust that department or that group, then I've got to be in there all the time poking around and figuring out what's going on. Yeah, that's where I met my wife. My wife was my accountant. She, um, I met her um, at a church function and then she left her job as working for an accounting firm. We started yeah. dating. She came over to help me because the accounting firm that I had in the very beginning was just not, not good. Huh. And they made a lot of mistakes and cost me a lot of money. And um, she's like, I can do a better job. She came in and uh, so, yeah, we, um, but I will, I, I will say this though, when you have a spouse or somebody significant working for you, it's hard. It's hard because you lose separation. that time, yeah. that separation. It's hard because you go home and you, you know, we, we get home and go out to dinner right away. You know, my kids were already grown and moved out by then. And uh, we'd go out to dinner. We talk shop the whole time. You got to find gotta be more. You gotta do this. Yeah, there's got to be more to talk about than the company or business or the the next contract, right? You, you, yep. Your spouse. I mean, and listen, lots of us, including myself, our spouse is part of the company, and I'm blessed to have that. But yep. it is nice to talk about something else. Yeah, exactly. We um, or we finally avoid, to, or to avoid something I don't want to talk about. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> it was hard because she would have an opinion, you know, and we'll we'll I want to get on this topic too because, you know. We would have, she would have an opinion saying, you need to fire that plumber. You know, he, I, I carried electrical, general electrical and plumbing. I carried three licenses. I only carry two right now, but I carried the plumbing. I dropped out when I sold the company, mm -hmm. but um, she'd say, you got to fire that plumber. I said, why would I fire that plumber? Well, he, you know, he did this wrong or he didn't show up or he's got to, you know, and I'm like, I said, do you want to do his work orders for him? Do you want me to put you in a truck the next day? You know, you, I think one of the biggest problems that I think a lot of us will echo, and I'm sure that a lot of the contractors are listening right now, is finding these quality guys to work for you. Oh, it is extremely hard. I mean, we, it's the magic. It's the magic. It, if, if I have my own crew, it's the magic value subs is finding that putting a team together that can do the job. Well, you know, when I sat at Kohler, I went up to Kohler. I used to be one of the official Kohler. I used to do, I was one of the official Numi toilets. Numi toilets are those electric toilets. Mm -hmm. And we were like one of the only people at the time who knew how to work on those. So we would have 300 mile radius that they would send us out on and pay for all of our time. Wow. And um, I remember going up to Kohler. They, they wind and dine us and took it up there. We had a round table and David Kohler was sitting at the table and he was like, so what are your biggest challenges? And I said, you, and he, you know, everybody stopped and looked at me like, Oh my God, what are you doing? I said that to I did. You know why? Because I said, you need to put in some training centers. We need to start training these youths. We need to start building these youths up. We need to start building our trade. We don't have a lot of trades people anymore. Our trades people are getting older. We're not getting the trades that we used to have or we would, you know, it's okay to tell Johnny or Betty if she doesn't need to go to college, go to trade school, learn how to be an electrician, learn how to be a plumber, learn how to frame. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not telling these kids that we're, we're, you know, telling them, Hey, go to college, go to college. You know, I, I, yeah. I told my sons, all well, both of my sons, you know, I told them both. I said, they said, you want to go? I said, yeah, you want to go to call? I'll pay you to go, but you're going to go through the contracting program and you're going to get your license. You're going to go, you're going to be a tradesperson because hmm. you're already doing it. You need to be licensed. So my son is licensed. My other son took another path. He's um, working in the coffee industry, but, um, but he loves it. And he's, he's like, he's, he's like me. He went full bore into it. Um, but he's a, he's a certified, like he's, he works for like this, he's a certified organic, like or something coffee grader. There's only uh, like 10 of them in like in California. He's like very well sought after. He can tell you where the beans came from and how good they are. And, he's like a sommelier for coffee. It sounds oh like. my gosh, it's, uh, it's no offense. And if you probably won't listen to this podcast, but it's very boring. I mean, I tell my friend, please don't ask him about coffee. 
because you guys will sit here for 45 friggin' minutes and we'll, you'll know way too much about coffee. You know, I just want to go in and order my cup. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. But my other son, he, he got his license, but he got his license in demo and he just does demo, he, in demo and hauling. And he's built this little business of his to making very, very good money. He's, mm -hmm. he's making six figures a year. Good. Um, you know, he's doing very well. He says, you know what I love about my job? And I said, what? He goes, people don't complain. They're happy. I come in and oh, I remove yeah. the stuff the yeah. or I, I demo it. I clean up. I get it all ready for the next guy that's all been certified. Everything. I don't do any jobs that are demo jobs that have been um, certified without uh, asbestos. Yeah. I go in. It's all. Everything's cleared. I'm good. I go do my job. Everybody's happy. I get paid. I'm like, I like that. <laughs> it's a good way to see things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, I've really appreciated having you here. This is excellent. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's it's so nice to see you in that back. You know, I recognize the background from the TV show. And now you sort of, you let us behind the curtain of Oz that that's the oh, studio thanks. for so many different things. And, you know, now I'm expecting to see that in the background of some rom-com that's shot there in LA. Or... Yeah, you'll see one. There's a detective show that's coming up. It's, um, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll, well, I'll post it when I'm allowed to. Ah. We had it. We had did it here. It was a. It was a like an L and M movie where the, a murder kind of mystery thing, and it was good. So they filmed it here. It was fun. Yeah, it is fun to have your our our house gets used every once in a while and uh, for movies. Oh, uh, very cool. Just, yeah, just recently, Sight Unseen, and then okay. my neighbors uh, are the one of the main houses for Riverdale. There's super women up here. The Flash. It's all all shot around here. I love that. Yeah, you wouldn't See, know. We're all in the same industry. You'd <laughs> never know. Yeah. Um, Steve, if somebody wants to find you this big wide world, how the heck would they do that? Usually I work, I respond well to a smokestack. Like if they want to do smoke <laughs> signals and send them out to me, no, um, honestly, I, I'm really easy to get a hold of. I'm, you know, Instagram or LinkedIn, uh, just my name, Steve Cedarquist. Um, I, I'm very accessible through Facebook as well. Just message me if you've got a question or anything that's up, uh, please hit me up. I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah. Well, thank you for being on the show. And folks, you can always link thank to you. it through our site. But Cedarquist is spelled with a C-E-D-E-R-Q-U-I-S-T. I, yes, I don't know how people thought they would spell Cedarquist, but that's, that's how. Like you would. They'd spell it with an A. Cedar yeah, Quist. so you're going to miss them. But, you you know, you're so findable online and through the show. Maybe uh, for people who want to see you live tonight or on uh, DVR, what's the TV show again? Uh, they can uh, look me up on Flip or Flop on HGTV, or they can look me up. Well, Flipping 101, we haven't aired yet, but please watch that show. That's one of our fun shows we love We love working with, Flipping 101 with Tarika Musa. And then Magnolia, we've already aired. Um, that was a house we did of, uh, that was called Capturing Home. And the episode we did was Empty Nesters, and that has already aired. Ah, uh, good. Lots of places to find you. Yep. All right. Well, thanks very much, Steve. I appreciate having you. Have a great day. Thank you very much, man. Have a good day. Okay, bye. Well, well, well. What did you learn from Mr. Steve Cedarquist? You know, sometimes I watch those uh, fix it or flip it shows and I'm like, does this contractor know what they're doing? But in Steve's case, he knows what he's doing, right? He knows what he's doing. So it's nice to have him on the show. Really great to have his insight, his intel. And uh, wow, he's multi-generational in the contracting trades. That is crazy. And he's working in one of the most highly regulated uh, states ever in the world. Um, hey, listen, I want to pass on something, a, a really nice thank you that came in from a gentleman who uh, is a member of the Contractor Strategy Group, which many of you know or you're members of. It's on Facebook. It's a free Facebook group that, that's part of our community. And we host it just for contractors to talk about contractor stuff. That's it. It's called Contractor Strategy Group. If you're not a member, apply to join. If you can't fill out the three questions to apply to join, you can't join. That's the simple system. And I, you would be amazed at how many people don't fill in the three questions and ask to join. It's crazy. Facebook is a crazy place. Anyways, this gentleman is not only a member of Contractor Strategy Group, but he's also doing one-on-one -on -one business coaching with myself and our coaching team. And here is something he wrote on Contractor Strategy Group. And you guys will see it. It's back in February. So if you're in the group, you can go back and look at this. Here's what he had to say. His name is Sam. I'll only use his first name right now. EOJs, well now that stands for end of job report. EOJs have changed the way I do business. 
Coach Lee stayed on me for weeks about getting data into an EOJ to review. He started coaching me on using the EOJ for quoting jobs. For a few weeks, I didn't really understand. But once I took the steps to implement that simple system into my process, I realized I would never go back to the old way. How's that? So here's somebody who's in the business, who's learning new tools, is saying, look, I had a little resistance, but I trusted the process. He's working with a great coach. Coach Lee Miller's fantastic. He's working with me as well. He's working with all of us on the team, right? And he's getting results, but he wasn't sure. He had to take that leap of faith. He goes on. For those of you who haven't read or implemented the book, Profit First for Contractors, I'd highly recommend. It's a fantastic book. You guys have heard me on the show. We've interviewed Mike Michalowicz. We've interviewed Sean Van Dyke and a number of other Profit First experts because Profit First is a great way to look at money. But here's what Sam had to say. If you're on the fence about reaching out to Dom with the let's talk text, <laughs> let's just do it. The 10X built coaching system has been a wealth of resource for me. I am on my way from being a cabinet maker who owns his own business to a business owner who happens to run a cabinet shop. High five to Sam. Thanks, Lee, for the quality of your service and to Dom for making hands down the coolest podcast out there. Uh, Joe Rogan has nothing on you. I don't care what people say. Oh, boy, you know how to get to my heart, Mr. Sam. Uh, anyways, thank you, Sam, for saying that. And, and thank you for taking the, the, the faith leap in yourself that you could grow. Sam's got some fantastic results he's already posted as, as a result of him taking actions in business coaching and having a plan, following the plan, working on it one step at a time. Um, hey, folks, if you've been listening to the podcast consistently, you know that last episode I offered up the profit pack. Well, I kind of blew up the internet. So I thought, well, I, if packs are the way to go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer another pack. And this one is called the More Better Customers Pack. If you want it, you guys know, text me 315-903-7853. This one's called the More Better Customers Pack. And you know what's in it? One, two, four, five, six documents. And these are six popular things that get downloaded when we talk about, hey, I'm running this contracting business, but I have a customer. I need more and better customers. Now you might listen, if you're coming at this saying, well, actually I've got lots of customers, Dom, but I get a lot of price resistance in the field. Everybody says I'm too expensive. Everybody says I'm expensive. If that's happening, I guarantee dollars to donuts. You don't have a customer problem. Like that's that not the person who's in front of you. That's the problem. You're in front of the wrong person. And that means you need to understand marketing. Now, how many of us hands up, don't do this. If you're driving, by the way, hands up, how many of us went to school to be professional marketers? and expert salespeople. How many of us? Maybe, maybe, maybe a few of you, maybe, maybe very few of you, but most of us are technicians. You know, we grew up on the tools and we thought, Hey, I'm really good at this. Why don't I start a company doing this? Or you started side jobs for somebody. Right? Anyways, here's what you're going to get in the more better customers pack. I know it's got a long title, but that's what it really is. More better customers. By the way, that's all you got to text me is the word more better customers. It's not good English, but I get the point. You know what you're asking for. We can get along really well. So the first thing you're going to get is the, uh, these are all free downloads. They're documents that you download onto your hard drive. These are the business building tools, the simple systems that you need. Number one, the ultimate get things under control guide for contractors. Number two, how to win commercial bids. Number three, how to calculate my revenue responsibility per hour. Number four, my ideal customer exercise, like figuring out who your ideal customer is. Number five, selling to homeowners. So you see, we've got how to win commercial bids. Now you've got how to sell to homeowners. For those of you who do commercial or residential work, we've got you covered. And then a really important one, the five questions that kick out tire kickers, tire kickers, time wasters. You might be driving right now to an appointment to do a free estimate for somebody who's never going to buy from you because they don't have the money, they don't really have the need, it's not the right time for them, or they don't actually know you well enough to make a buying decision. You are going and wasting your time. What's even worse, what's even worse is your wife really needed you to be doing something at home. You needed to go see your buddies because you haven't seen them in weeks or months or years, or you just needed some downtime to think about an estimate or a job or a project plan you're working on, and you're going to waste your time driving to a potential job that's never going to be a job. That is what 
the five questions that take out kick out tire kickers is all about. So I want you to get this download there or this pack. It's it's a lot of documents. One, two. That's a lot of coffees. I want you to print this off. I want you to still go to a coffee shop, face the corner, put your headphones in, drink your favorite coffee with your favorite pen or pencil or a bunch of pens and pencils. These are all workbooks. This is self-directed. You can just go fix your business. Go become the business owner you want to be. These are the tools to do it. These are the, hey, by the way, some other coaches uh, send me texts because they want my stuff. <laughs> I love it. And you know what? I'm okay. Share it with them. What's the harm? What is the harm if other coaches are following me and getting the free downloads? No harm to me. I set the pace. I don't follow the pace. Have them. Have them. They're yours. Go put them in place. Help more people. That's what we're here to do. Anyways, more better customers. Send me a text at 315-903-7853 and just say, Dom, I want more better customers. And I'll go, okay. And then I'll send it off to you. All right, listen, thank you for listening in. I'm really, really happy to be with you today. Uh, as you know, this podcast or the YouTube video, if you're watching it there, it's just this thin and flimsy excuse until we can get to the point where you and I have a cup of coffee or a glass of wine across the table from each other. That's what I really want. And I'm sure one day that'll happen. Until then, have a great day. We'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>